I'm starting to worry a bit about artificial or more appropriately named non-nutritive sweeteners. In the past, I didn't think much of them, especially since they have some benefits that are irrefutable, like helping with weight loss, fat loss across a series of randomized controlled trials. However, more and more data has come out on other outcomes like blood sugar, insulin resistance, and now cognitive health that don't exactly spell out comfort. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this study that's made its way to my eyeballs. In this new study, the researchers have looked at a bunch of non-nutritive sweeteners. I'm going to abbreviate them as sweeteners from now on. And here they are and tracked the cognitive decline by a few different metrics over eight years of consumption on average. Now, to be able to tease out if the sweeteners track with cognitive decline, the researchers broke up 12,000 people based on their amount of consumption, a low, moderate, or high intake. So the idea here is that if those that consume more of these sweeteners have a greater cognitive decline than those who consume less, there's a link between sweeteners and cognitive decline. So when we look at the data here, we're looking at the measure of verbal fluency, a measure of cognitive ability, and each line corresponds to the amount of total sweetener consumption. The solid blue line is the lowest consumption, the teal dotted line is moderate, and the reddish line is the mostest. We'll pretend that's a word. We have participants age on the horizontal axis and the amount of cognitive functional decline on the vertical. Essentially, the lower the lines go, the worse. Now, all three lines go down. Not a surprise, considering age is also a factor in itself. However, confirmed statistically, the ones who consume the most sweeteners as a whole have more rapid decline. The same was true for some of the other cognitive measures, but not all. The main point here is that non-nutritive sweeteners are associated with faster cognitive decline. But that isn't the take-home message because there's some intriguing nuances that I think are important here. For one, the link is stronger in people with compromised metabolic health like type 2 diabetes. The relationship was much weaker in people without diabetes. Those are still some pretty big buckets, but they offer us a clue that your current health dictates if these sweeteners are more or less associated with faster cognitive decline. I'm not saying that if you're healthy, there's no worry, just that there's less potent of a link. Now, this study is associative, meaning that we are linking sweeteners to cognitive decline, but we aren't saying sweeteners cause cognitive decline. Or are we? Well, I'll get into that in just a moment. There's more that I have to say on this whole study and others related, like getting into the different types of non-nutritive sweeteners like aspartame, saccharin, and more. And if you're interested in the extended analysis, check out the Physionic Insiders. It's where I keep the extended version of the video that you're watching. Plus an accompanying article, actionable takeaways, a private podcast, live sessions with me, and more. Link to join is in the description. I'll see you over there if you're so inclined. Okay, back to the details. Why might it lean towards being worrisome? For many reasons, actually. First, you remember how we went over the low, moderate, and high consumption of non-nutritive sweeteners? Well, the low consumption went up to 37 milligrams. The moderate went up to 102 milligrams, and the highest group went up to 850 milligrams. Now, I know that doesn't actually mean anything to you, but let me put this into a more visual perspective for you. Diet drinks like Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi or whatever you choose contain varying levels of these non-nutritive sweeteners from around 80 to 150 milligrams. So just a single can per day is enough to put someone in the moderate to high consumption group. One drawback of combining the sweeteners into these ranges is that some of the sweeteners are consumed at tens or hundreds of milligrams, while others are less than a single milligram. So it muddies the comparisons when looking at the total. Anyway, the point here is that even modest sweetener consumption in a day-to-day -day life puts you in the higher levels according to this analysis. So you would have this association with increased cognitive decline. The second concern that I have is that while this study is associative, they did account for many of the factors that could explain these results by adjusting for these factors. So 
the data that we looked over earlier is accounting for these factors because the group that consumed more of these non-nutritive sweeteners tended to be a bit more overweight, eat more, and have slightly higher incidence of diseases like cardiovascular disease and others. So clearly that could easily explain the more rapid cognitive decline. But the researchers controlled for that, leaving the sweetener consumption and whatever else that wasn't accounted for as a potential reason for this cognitive decline. This concern ties in nicely with the third and likely most powerful. How do these data compare in intervention studies? Essentially, if I give you a sweetener because I'm threatened by your intelligence, do we see measurable declines in your mental performance? I sure hope so. That is something that we can measure. So I did a bit of digging. So the good news is that many intervention studies on the topic indicate no negative effects, even at very high doses. Yet there are still other studies that indicate worsening of cognitive performance. Unfortunately, many of the studies are poor quality, failing to do the correct statistical comparisons or improper controls or giving mixed results. Understandably, this just makes things altogether that much more confusing. So to simplify everything, here's how I would frame it. We saw that this associative study indicates a link between a more non-nutritive sweetener consumption and cognitive decline, especially true for people with type 2 diabetes. We also know that there isn't enough intervention data to really make a strong case. So put yourself in one of these three buckets. Keep in mind that these are cognition focused. One, you would avoid all non-nutritive sweeteners from here on out. I do not think the data is strong enough to warrant this reaction, but if you do not want to emotionally risk it, no one can argue with that. Number two, you will lessen your sweetener consumption out of caution. If you're concerned about cognitive health and don't use them for other reasons, so fat loss as an example, I think this is reasonable, especially for two particular sweeteners, xylitol and erythritol, because they showed the greatest association. And although we don't have any intervention data, it may be a play it safer than sorry scenario until we have more data. Or three, you will consume these sweeteners without concern. I do not fall in this camp anymore. I find myself somewhere between here and option two. I still think that non-nutritive sweeteners are beneficial in many instances, but there's a lot yet unknown about different sweeteners in the brain, as is evident by the lack of intervention data right now. In fact, some of that caution that I mentioned specifically about erythritol and xylitol has been explored in other studies, which I detail right here. I hope this was helpful and keep in mind that there's a lot more to be investigated, especially as not all sweeteners are the same. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.